This video will cover two main areas of organic chemistry, the manufacture of ethanol and the production of polymers. Let's begin with the manufacture of ethanol. There are two main methods for producing ethanol. One of them by passing ethene and steam over a phosphoric acid catalyst at a temperature of about 300 degrees and a pressure of 60 to 70 atmospheres. These conditions are important and you will be expected to remember them. The second method of production of ethanol is by fermentation of sugars, for example glucose. This takes place at temperatures of roughly 30 degrees C, higher than this temperature and the enzymes used from the yeast in the fermentation process will be denatured. You will be expected to highlight the advantages and disadvantages of each method of production of ethanol. We will first compare the conditions used. For the hydration of ethene, the high pressure and temperatures require a lot of energy. Energy means fossil fuels burning and or the production of carbon dioxide and other pollution. Let's contrast this to the fermentation conditions, which are 30 degrees C and normal atmospheric pressure. This requires a much lower energy requirement. Therefore, in theory, produces less carbon dioxide. Let's compare the type of processes. For the hydration of ethene, it is a continuous process. This means that it can run non-stop, as long as ethene, steam, phosphoric acid catalysts, and the correct temperature and pressure are available, then ethanol can be produced without stopping. If we contrast this to the fermentation of glucose with yeast to produce ethanol, this is a batch process, which means it stops and starts. The raw materials are added together in large vats, fermentation is allowed to take place, then the process is stopped and the ethanol removed. Add to this that fermentation is a slow process and can take place over several days. This means that the fermentation compared to the hydration of ethene is a much slower process, producing smaller volumes of ethanol in the same period of time. This leads us to purification. With the hydration of ethene, a very pure product is produced with no byproducts. Compare this to fermentation, which is very low purity. The, the ethanol produced is roughly only 15% of the total volume of liquid that you started with. Therefore, fractional distillation must take place to remove the ethanol which you have produced. Further to this, sustainability is considered. The hydration of ethene requires ethene as a starting material. The main source of ethene will be from crude oil. Crude oil is a non-renewable resource and to produce the ethene, fractional distillation of crude oil will be required to take place. Possibly, cracking is required of long chain hydrocarbons to produce the smaller ethene molecules. Fermentation's sustainability is greater as the main resource, glucose, is from plants. So plants can be grown, the sugars removed and these added to the batch process with the yeast to produce the ethanol. In theory plants can be grown again and again so therefore it is a renewable resource. On IGCSE exam papers you will be expected to evaluate the factors relevant to the choice of production method for manufacturing ethanol. For example, you may be expected to choose which method of manufacture of ethanol is preferred when given the following information. A manufacturer wishes to produce large quantities of ethanol for industrial use. They have access to an oil refinery within their vicinity you would clearly choose the hydration of ethene as they will have access to the raw material, ethene, and this process provides a continuous process with a high purity which can then be turned straight into an industrial ethanol product. Another example would be a developing nation who has lots of land, sunshine, and low access to fossil fuels. Therefore, the process of fermentation would be preferred as this community 
could produce crops to be the source of the sugar, the glucose, for the fermentation reaction and therefore produce ethanol via a batch process. If we look at the equation for the fermentation process, we start with sugar, which is glucose, C6H12O6 aqueous, producing ethanol, C2H5OH, which is a liquid, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. Over the arrow, we write yeast. For every molecule of glucose used in the fermentation process, we produce two molecules of ethanol and two molecules of carbon dioxide. The equation for the manufacture of ethanol from ethene involves ethene, C2H4 gaseous, and water in the form of steam, so that's H2O gaseous, producing ethanol, C2H5OH, in a gaseous form. Over the arrow, we write 300 degrees C, 70 atmospheres, and a phosphoric acid catalyst. There is one further reaction of ethanol that we must know about. This is the dehydration of ethanol to make ethene. Ethanol, in its gaseous state, when passed over a hot aluminium oxide catalyst, will be dehydrated to form ethene, gaseous, and water. The next main area for this video is the production of polymers. Polymers are often known by their common name, which is plastics. They are everywhere around us. To produce polymers, we must start with a monomer. Mono meaning one, poly meaning many. Monomers are small molecules, such as ethene, which include a double bond. These identical small molecules, the monomers, are placed together under heat and the presence of a catalyst, and the double bond breaks. When the double bond breaks, it forms a single covalent bond to an adjacent molecule, so a carbon-carbon bond is formed. This process is repeated many times until the molecules link together. We've now formed a polymer. There are huge numbers of addition polymers. We will focus on three. Ethene is used to produce polyethene or polythene. Polythene is a really useful plastic. It is easy to shape, strong and it's transparent. It has many uses including plastic bags, drinks bottles, dustbins, cling film, bowls, buckets, etc. But it melts easily and also catches fire. Propene is used to produce polypropene. Polypropene is more rigid than polyethene. It's tough and it's durable. It is used for making crates, ropes and fibres in carpets. Chloroethene is used to produce polychloroethene or PVC. PVC is also very useful, for example, for use in producing window frames because it's stiff and it doesn't bend easily, and insulation on wires because it doesn't catch fire easily and is easy to add colour to. Further to this, it can be used for plastic sheeting and artificial leathers. In an exam, you may be expected to name a polymer or a monomer. You may be expected to spot and identify the monomer from which a polymer is made. So you will have to identify the repeating unit seen in a polymer chain. When going from a polymer to a monomer, remember to redraw the double bond and remove the bonds on the ends of the carbon atoms. You may be expected to write an equation for a polymerization reaction. We start by drawing the monomer with the letter N signifying many of or number of. Then the arrow followed by the polymer. To draw a polymer you start by drawing the monomer remembering not to draw a double bond in the center as this is broken. Then draw bonds extending from either side of the carbon putting square brackets around and putting the letter N at the end. You will notice that the monomer and the polymer look very similar. To name a polymer, you take the name of the monomer and write the word poly in front of it. You may also write the name of the monomer in brackets. So for example, chloroethene will become poly 
bracket, chloroethene, close bracket. One of the main advantages of addition polymers are that they are chemically inert and therefore can be used to store many different products. But this is also an issue when it comes to their disposal. Due to this inertness, addition polymers are hard to dispose of as they are not easily biodegradable. This means that if they are left in the ground or in the environment, they do not perish. They remain persistent for many, many years, possibly hundreds if not thousands. There are a number of different methods of dealing with addition polymers. These include sorting and recycling, but this is labour intensive as there are many different types of polymer. So when you are recycling you may have noticed a small triangle made of arrows with a number inside and sometimes letters at the bottom. These indicate what type of polymer you are recycling. These must be selected and sorted. Also not every plastic can be recycled at the moment so there will still be some that have to be disposed of in a different way. The other methods include landfill sites. This is a poor solution because the plastics are simply piled up in giant holes in the ground and left. This is a valuable resource that's being wasted if we consider that most of the plastics have started as crude oil. They can also harm wildlife as birds and other animals can attempt to eat food or debris that is trapped on the plastic or even mistake the plastic as food itself. This can have enormous implications for sea life. The plastics in the landfill site may remain there for thousands of years. Our final option is burning or incineration. Incinerators are expensive to build. They produce huge amounts of toxic fumes that are released into the atmosphere. They can be captured and processed. However, this is still a toxic process. However, an advantage is that the energy produced from the burning of the plastics or polymers is useful for heating homes or powering or heating factories. In addition to addition polymers are condensation polymers. Condensation polymers are different to addition polymers because they start with two different monomers reacting together rather than with addition polymers which is the same monomer reacting together. When these two different molecules, these two different monomers, react together, they expel a water molecule. This is where the word condensation comes from, as water is produced. A common addition polymer is nylon. To conclude, this video has talked about the production of ethanol via two different processes, fermentation and the hydration of ethene, the production of polymers from monomers to make addition polymers and condensation polymers, and we discussed the issues with the disposal and management of waste polymers.